I've been talking a lot about existential panic lately, and uh, there's a reason for this. I think that one of the problems that I have with religion, that a lot of people have with religion, is this sense of blind optimism that uh, seems to hold that no matter what, the world is a good place and that God is good and uh, the rose-colored glasses are justified, etc. Um, when you actually look at the issue of existential panic, it seems to be <clears throat> um, sort of the opposite of that, uh, the mirror image, rather, or the flip side of the coin, equally unrealistic or and unreasonable. Um, even intelligent people like uh, Peter Zopfe in The Last Messiah, who writes quite poetically about the issue of ag existential panic, um, seems to indicate that it is insurmountable, that um, the best thing that we can do to uh, cope with or to deal with the issue of existential horror is to succumb to it or to learn to live with it. Um, I don't know. I don't. I can't see the world in that sort of polarized manner. I can't see reality that way. That existence is fundamentally good or existence is fundamentally bad. Uh, I think that we have to sort of come to terms with the fact that both points of view are heavily laden with bias, um, and we have to reject both points of view that sort of say that when you're in a state of, I guess, optimistic bliss or existential horror, you're seeing things for what they actually are. Um, that's the implication in Zafi's The Last Messiah, is that the caveman who comes out and suddenly realizes that he's encased in this uh, corpse of flesh, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. He's encased in a body and subject to this reality. Zapfi seems to indicate that what he's seeing is the fundamental reality of the situation. Um, whereas the caveman in that scenario could just as easily have had a sudden uh, sense of the beatific, uh, the beatific vision of the fundamental unity and beautifulness of of everything and how there's absolutely nothing to worry about and everything will take care of itself and the universe is a fundamentally benign place. Um, either one of them, I think, is unreasonable and I think it's unreasonable to sort of just take sides and say that, you know, one of these is right and one of these is wrong when there are apparently logical and reasonable uh, proofs that uh, that each of them is right in its own way. Um, but I do say that being in love with the world or being horrified from, by it are, are both equally biased and, well, we know what bias does to your ability to reason correctly.